You bet, Jim. Thanks, and and good morning to everyone. It's a uh, uh, almost a deja vu type of thing from, I think last week we were looking out at a frosty morning and the same is true here today. But uh, today I think we can say with a little more confidence that this, uh, for most places, this may be the last of this long string of, of unseasonably cool conditions uh, with, con well, with warming certainly expected in the, the near and, and midterm future. Uh, it also may be climatologically, I would, I would really be surprised this probably will be the last freezing temperatures. And it's a little bit warmer today uh, than it was over the last several days. There, there are some portions of the state that have had uh, frost and or freezing temperatures almost on a daily basis for the entire past week. And even for uh, interior northern parts of the state, which are the last to see that last spring freeze event, uh, that's that's unusual. It's hard to do. But it's, uh, uh, I guess a, tr a little bit of a reminder of how, how cold and how dry the air mass is uh, over Michigan or has been here for the last several days. If we look at the last week, starting with, uh, with, with the last week, on the left-hand side, these are mean temperature departures for the week. And you can see the, the numbers. We all, all almost had to get extra colors uh, because the departures were so negative, but uh, eight to as much as even 12 degrees Fahrenheit below normal for the week. And I, I actually went back and looked, the last time we had conditions that far below normal, was the Arctic outbreak back in uh, the middle of, of February. So it's been some time since we've uh, we've seen, uh, again, abnormal conditions like that. Just as importantly, or, or and for some even more importantly here on the right-hand side, uh, it was for many portions of the state, especially across the Southern Lower, it was another unusually dry week. Of course, continuing a trend that goes back into the winter as well and is, uh, up to the spring much of this time. Uh, the totals here ranged from uh, uh, more than a half an inch in the, the, the halves of far extreme southern part of the state and portions of the northern lower also got over half an inch. Uh, but much of the re remainder, uh, especially the dry areas in the southern part of the state, less than a quarter of an inch. And if you were watching the radar uh, like I was, uh, we, we talked about this last week about uh, promises for rainfall. And yes, the weather system did move out of the, the lower Mississippi Valley and the Ohio Valley. But uh, as you can see from the map here, it just, when it got to the border, uh, literally uh, almost like the Michigan, Indiana, Ohio state lines here, uh, the, ra the rainfall basically stopped. And there were, it's it, incredible to note that not too far south of Michigan in portions of Northern uh, Indiana and Ohio and East Central Illinois, they had over two inches of rain with that system, but it just did not make it uh, far enough northward into Michigan. And so the significant rain was really limited to the, the southern tier and even that part southern parts of those counties. So uh, here we are with this uh, prolonged dry pattern. If we're going to have a dry pattern, of course, we've, we've said before, this is probably that the, this is a better time of the year to have it rather than the middle of the growing season, or the latter part of the growing season when water needs are higher. But it is obviously now, as, as Aaron alluded to and made comments about uh, it is causing issues uh, for a number of people. And while the dryness is certainly uh, help, helping us to get field work done, we're way ahead of normal on planting. Uh, it, we have to have some moisture ultimately to get germination and, and herbicide activation. Some of these uh, other issues that require water and, and the topsoils, again, are, are unusually dry at this point in time. Uh, degree day totals, and this is a new format here. I'm, I'm now have shifted to seasonal totals beginning on the 1st of May. And given the temperature departures from normal you just saw, it's not surprising that our base 50, and these are corn degree day units with the 86 and 50 cutoffs, uh, which are typically what we use for hybrid uh, variety selection, et cetera. Uh, and we'll, we'll use these for the remainder of the year. But again, it's been cool for, uh, for much of May so far. And as a result of that, our degree day totals, uh, for what it's worth at this, this very early in the season, but they're still lagging behind normal. If we go back to the beginning of March and look at that longer season, and then we, we think about our overwintering uh, crops here, then we still have some surpluses of degree days uh, for that period in southern parts of the state, but because of the recent colder weather, we've those surpluses are almost all gone. In the northern part of the state, we're actually now a couple days, calendar days behind, again, relative to that, that first of, of March start. So the uh, starting of that, that season does, does matter in this case, but 
Uh, needless to say, the cool weather recently has really, really slowed things down phenologically. And of course, it doesn't help that we have, in many areas, haven't had much water as well. Soil temperatures have also cooled off. This is a average two inch bare soil temperatures here through the 10th. It's, it's close to this, but uh, most of the state now, the averages are in the upper 40s in northern parts of the state and into the low 50s. So we're sort of marginal right around that area where we like to see for, of course, for, for planting, but it definitely is cooler than it was at the end of April, uh, the beginning of May. So the, the cool weather has impacted the soils uh, just a bit. And back to the soil moisture here, this is a uh, product that, that looks at plant available moisture in the top, uh, the top three feet of the profile. And uh, you can see again, very, very location specific dependent pattern here in Michigan, ranging from near normal levels across the northern part of the state where there's been significantly more precipitation, even now down into the northern lower. They've, they've uh, also had more precipitation recently, but the large area across the southern half of, uh, of the state where we're way down, in some cases down 20, 25% of normal uh, again, this is all plant extractable moisture in that, that uh, top three feet. And then look to our south. This is an area that actually was abnormally dry not that long ago, but you can see some, uh, some dark greens in here, which reflects these weather systems that there are at least three of them that I counted that have come up uh, and looked very good for Michigan. But again, the precip with those just didn't, uh, didn't make it very far north into Michigan. And again, you can see this is a reflection of that pattern. So Michigan, and then uh, as you can see, uh, areas off to our east in the southern Ontario into the lower lakes, that's an area that has, uh, has really well developed in terms of abnormal dryness here over the last several weeks. Uh, and as a result of this, the U.S. Drought Monitor uh, has, has almost all of the lower peninsula in the second category, the D1 moderate drought. Uh, we'll see what happens. This, this is last week's uh, values, uh, but wouldn't be surprised, maybe a little bit of help uh, or improvement in the northern part of that region and maybe the opposite uh, in the south. But uh, it is, a, 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 you know, I think the total number here, 78% of, of Michigan now in either abnormally dry or moderate drought. And uh, well, given the forecast, we, this, will, this will probably be uh, changing or, or being adjusted here over the next week or two. So let's look at the forecast, look ahead. Uh, and and the, the story really is this uh, big blue H here, this is the center of high pressure you can see just to the uh, southwest of, of Chicago. That is, the, that is the primary feature. That's been our, the primary weather factor we've had for the last several days. And it will continue to be for the next couple. Uh, and as long as we're on the eastern side of that high, uh, we, we've seen these cool, dry, fair days with frosty nights. But once it, and it's only going to slowly move here over the next couple of days, but once it finally does get to our east and we will see return flow on the west, we should see a notable improvement or moderation in temperatures. I think actually we will see some of that here today. Uh, our high temperatures will be several degrees warmer than they have been over the past, uh, the past several days. And uh, there will be a couple spots, I think, even today that might, it's, it's dry air as well. That's another factor here. And one thing I should also mention, with all of the frost freezing temperatures, it's important to remember that, that soil moisture has an influence on that. So uh, we saw evidence of this certainly in southern parts of the state over the last couple of days where the minimum temperatures in some cases got down into the upper 20s a little bit unexpectedly, and, and some of even the weather forecast guidance didn't pick this up, but the reason was is because we have abnormally dry topsoils, and when we have water in the, that topsoil area, it improves the thermal conductivity with a passage of heat both upwards and downwards. And so when we have wet soils or wet topsoils, it generally keeps that minimum temperature up a few degrees warmer than it would be otherwise. And of course, the opposite is true as well. When we're really dry, uh, most of the heat stays confined because it just the soil just won't pass or conduct as much heat, so we get cooler. Uh, and that has definitely been apparent here uh, over the last several days. So all of these things act collectively together sometimes uh, to cause a, a prolonged, cool, dry uh, type of period here. And uh, I'll step through here to the tomorrow morning. Again, not much change. You can see the high mo moves maybe uh, 150 miles or so to the uh, east. And then finally to Saturday morning here at 8 o'clock. It's, it's a little bit further, but we definitely will be here over the next 48 hours 
we will be starting to see return flow and warmer conditions moving in. And while we might see there's a possibility tonight with still some dry air, uh, this air mass still around, we might see some scattered frost in some areas. It won't be nearly as, as much uh, in terms of aerial coverage or magnitude as we've seen in recent nights. So probably looking at a minimum, uh, maybe in the mid 30s, maybe the upper 30s. So just some low lying spots would be the only area, the places I think that you might see frost here tomorrow morning. And after that, that's it. We should see our max temperatures warming up into the 60s in many areas and probably 70s by uh, the weekend, the low, low 70s, maybe mid 70s by middle of next week. And then the low temperatures gradually warming back up into the 40s and probably even the 50s, low 50s by next week. So definitely warming is, uh, is the direction we're headed in terms of temperature here. Again, just as importantly, or maybe more importantly, it looks like it's gonna be a, another drier than normal week for, uh, for most of us. Uh, we, we see these promising signs of rainfall in the forecast guidance, which, which are, well, becoming less so as we get close to the event. And that is an, a, a happening once again here. The next weather system of any note uh, approaches us on late Sunday and Monday. And that's really the next chance for anything significant in the way of rainfall. We could see a couple of, of isolated sprinkles uh, tomorrow and Saturday in, in the northern part of the state, but that would be by far the exception rather than the rule and it won't be anything significant in terms of amount. Uh, so the next system really of, of note is, is late Sunday into Monday. And uh, right now it's probably the best chances with this uh, will be in southern parts of the state, just like what we've seen for the last few weeks. And uh, odds are, again, it probably will be light. As you can see totals here for most, much of the state, only a, a tenth of an inch or less. So uh, well below normal or where we should be for this time of year. The next chance for, for precip after this, probably coming towards the end of, of next week. So we may be in a long stretch here where we have to deal with these, uh, again, especially dry topsoils uh, as, as an issue. It'll promote certainly field work and, and, and getting work done, but uh, we, we have to have water at some point too for, for germination and, and, uh, and an early establishment. And right now we're stuck in a, in a fairly dry pattern. So there's gonna, and there, there are signs of some changes and I don't know that all of them are positive, but in the medium range forecast guidance, and we'll finish up here. We look at this jet stream pattern here, what clearly has happened. One good thing, and that is that the uh, axis of this trough across North America has moved out to the Western part of the country uh, and at least temporarily puts us more in the southwesterly flow, which definitely will drive temperatures back up to above normal levels. And I think that will be apparent as, as early as the middle of next week and probably thereafter. Both the six to 10 day and eight to 14 day outlooks are very, very similar. Uh, but what is different here over the last couple of days is the the magnitude of this ridging factor or feature here in the jet stream across the Great Lakes. And it's, uh, as we got, we've gotten closer, gotten further along, it, it's a larger amplitude ridge. And with those, uh, most of you remember, those are usually warm and dry for, uh, for us in our part of the world. And, and that certainly, I think, holds true here. Earlier versions of this did not have the ridge as strong as it is indicated here. And so as a result, our, our medium range forecast is went from calling from warmer and maybe even wetter than normal conditions across the upper Midwest to calling for drier than normal. And that's what this outlook does, the, the current version, and also the eight to 14 day timeframe. So we're gonna have to watch this really carefully. Uh, again, it's, it's, it's unusual at this time of the year to have such a long, a prolonged dry spell. But right now, at least for the short term and the medium term, uh, we're moving into a warmer and drier period. And of course, as it does warm up, the evaporative demand will also increase as well. Uh, so there will be uh, significant demand for water, which of course doesn't exist in many parts, and that will, will continue to be uh, an issue, or the dryness, at, or even maybe a little worse than it has been. So again, overall here, short term, fair and dry in the vast majority of the state with a, a noticeable warming trend. Uh, even starting today, we should, uh, with sunny skies, we should make it into the 60s. And in, uh, just as importantly, our low temperatures are also gonna be on the way up here over the next several mornings. So hopefully we've seen the last of the frost and or freezing temperatures. But uh, in terms of water, maybe late Sunday and Monday, especially across the South, that'll be the best chances. Uh, but then after that, not until probably late next week where we see uh, another weather system, but collectively warmer 
and uh, it may be even a little drier than normal is, is the direction that we're looking at for most of these forecasts right now. With that, I'll, I'll wrap up and introduce our speaker for next week. It's Dr. Marty Chilvers is gonna be with us here uh, next Thursday, the 20th for virtual breakfast. And Marty will be discussing uh, headscap with wheat management. Uh, timely topic here. And, and again, with the dryness here, uh, I hope, well, he may not have as much to talk about as he typically does this time of the year, but don't forget to join us here uh, next Thursday. And with that, uh, Jim, I'll turn it back to you.